In a major South India push, Prime Minister Modi is set to hold a roadshow in Chennai. In fact, we're getting live shots of the Prime Minister in the middle of that roadshow in Tamil Nadu. With less than a fortnight left for phase one of the Lok Sabha elections, Prime Minister Modi will continue his Tamil Nadu push as he will be on a two-day visit to the state. All uh, the 39 seats will vote in the first phase. The roadshow will cover South Chennai and Central Chennai constituencies in the Last 2019 Lok Sabha elections, DMK had swept 38 out of the 39 seats. So the Prime Minister's mega roadshow comes with a major anticipation ahead of the Lok Sabha polls. The big question comes, will the PM's campaign blitzkrieg be able to sway the voters in Tamil Nadu? We'll talk about this with our guest. Joining us on the show is political analyst Dr. S.K. Datta with me in the studio. Uh, Mr. Sumit Peer, senior political commentator, Vinita Hariharan, BJP spokesperson, Mr. Mohan K. Mangalam, Congress spokesperson, also joins us on the show. Advocate uh, C. Rajashekharan, President, voice of uh, Tamiz Nadu, is also with us on the show. Kevin Matthew, a political analyst, with us on the program as well. And Rajalakshmi Joshi, political <coughs> analyst, with us on the program as well. Dr. Datta, I'll begin with you. Well, over the last few years, you know, it is hard but not to observe that the Prime Minister, the Home Minister, you know, they have made a number of visits to South India. That has gone on to show the seriousness with which they want to win over the hearts of the Tamil people. We haven't seen such visits perhaps from Rahul Gandhi, even in constituencies where the Congress or the left has had, you know, a favorable impact in the past. Uh, if, if, if Rahul Gandhi was not doing well in Madhya Pradesh or Rajasthan or Bihar, I haven't seen him go there. I haven't heard Priyanka Gandhi Vadra or Sonia Gandhi go to these places. So right now we are talking not just about political intent, we are talking about political aspiration and we are also talking about political mindset conversion. Is that the big formula that the Prime Minister is adhering to right now? Yes, absolutely, Vinit. And uh, I would say that that is where the difference lies. The Honorable Prime Minister, not once, not twice, but I think in the last 10 years, I guess it would be at least around 150 to 175 times that he has visited South India, whether it's Karnataka, whether it's Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu or Kerala, you know. And if I compare that statistics with that of Sriman Rahulji, then I think it is not more than, uh, you know, 15 or 20, might be, might be even less. And Priyanka Gandhi could be, uh, you know, uh, somewhere between, uh, uh, you know, seven, eight, not more than that for Priyanka Vadra, you know. So from there itself, we can understand as to who is serious and who is non-serious. If you are just coming as a political icon or as a political paratrooper just before election and you click selfies and you just give hugs to people and then you vanish off after the election. But you did take uh, out the Nyaya Yatra and uh, the Bharat Jodo Yatra. You know, if, uh, uh, if, if someone knows Bharat properly, I don't think so you need to have a Bharat Jodo Yatra mm. or a Bharat Naya Yatra as such. And if you still feel that, yes, you need to discover Bharat, then I think you should have done that discovery since the last 18 years. Who stopped you from doing that? You know, mm. you could have done that from the day one. Second thing is like, I would have appreciated the political <coughs> credentials or the political seriousness of Rahul Ji and Priyanka if they would have continued this irrespective of elections. You know, why is it that you are only visible during the time of election and you just take a break off and you go off Abroad, uh, you know, abroad for holidays and for siesta, even during the time of the parliament session also, or in the off season when there is no election in any of the state. Second is like the states where you have been losing uh, regularly, why don't you show your face there? BJP has never won Tamil Nadu or BJP has never won Kerala or Andhra Pradesh or for that matter uh, Telangana, but has it stopped the uh, Home Minister or for that matter the Defence Minister or the Honourable Prime Minister or the Finance Minister from going there? I mean, they keep on going regularly, you know. The kind of uh, developmental schemes which the Honourable Prime Minister has brought 
brought in for the southern states in the last 10 years, that itself shows the political magnanimity which he mm. has. Okay. And at the same time, the seriousness which he has on holistic development of every nook and corner of this country, irrespective of political spectrum. Okay, let's get a response from Mr. Manglam, Congress spokesperson on what you have said as well. Mr. Manglam, would you like to respond to what Dr. Datta has said? that uh, when it comes to initiative or, uh, you know, when it comes to ideas in South India, the Congress has run out of them. I mean, I don't see why I should believe anything of what he says, because we're in government now in a, with a pretty heavy majority in two of the states in South India, which is Telangana and Karnataka. BJP was nowhere on the ground in Telangana and BJP lost a pretty hard fought election in Karnataka. So we, we are coming up with new ideas every day in these two states. And in fact, it's our guarantees that now Mr. Modi has picked up and calling Modi ka guarantee for his failed guarantees. That uh, is the campaign idea that he's going to the people with. Now, this I think the topic of this debate was about uh, Mr. Modi's roadshow in Tamil Nadu and if it will have an impact. Listen, I'm not, uh, I'll agree with one thing with the professor saying that Mr. Modi and the Home Minister, and mostly Mr. Modi, has been campaigning pretty severely in the South uh, with different campaign strategies for each state. I'm from the state of Tamil Nadu and I can tell you that Mr. Modi is popularity ratings are off maybe three to one or two and a half to one to Mr. Gandhi's. So 75% for Mr. Gandhi in his popularity ratings and 25% for Mr. Modi. Despite being so unpopular in Tamil Nadu, he's certainly giving it his best. And that's because if he has to attain his stated target of Teen so par or which char so par, doesn't even seem like it's possible. Even if it's teen so par, then he has to focus on the east and the south because he's saturated in the north and the west. Uh, the east being, I'm talking about from Bengal, Odisha, downwards into Andhra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. If he doesn't make gains here, he won't even get to teen so par. So he's trying the best he can. Unfortunately for him, there are not many issues he can go to the people with in Tamil Nadu. I mean, there are the bigger issues where he's not given a response is in the devolution of taxes, for example. When he moved the population num uh, date forward, Tamil Nadu and most much of the South, because we did better population control, have a much lower percentage of the taxes than we had before. So we're getting much lower devolution than the states in the North. And this is an issue that has been brought up again and again to the Prime Minister. There is really no great answer. There's also the 2026 delimitation issue where everyone in the South fears that uh, the representation in Parliament is going to be lowered. Again, there is no clear answer for that. And as far as Mr. Modi's development projects in the South go, I'll say in Tamil Nadu, for example, he laid the foundation stone before the last Parliament election for a AIMS that still hasn't come up. In fact, that AIMS now is doing classes somewhere else. There's not even an OPD block or to talk of an actual fully functioning AIMS Institute. So any most of the time it is around parliament elections or around elections that Mr. Modi comes. He's also tried the strategy in Tamil Nadu of uh, trying to evoke emotions. So Kashi Tamil Sangam, the Kachiti issue, the Sengol in parliament, all of this just to try and somehow target the emotional strings of the Tamilians. But that's not worked out for him either. They contested 25 seats in the last assembly elections in Tamil Nadu with a very powerful Dravidian partner in ADMK and won only four of them. Now they've jumped the gun, left that partner and they're actually hoping to win a seat, but they're going to end up winning almost no seats. Uh, in fact, a lot of the conversation today in Tamil Nadu is already about them getting double digit vote share, which also I think is not a big accomplishment because in 2014, when they led an independent formation of the two Dravidian parties, they ended up with 18%. That's what any non Dravidian formation tends to get tends to get between 10 to 20 percent of the vote. It is one of the two Dravidian formations that actually wins the election. And this time, because of the fact that the anti-incumbency vote is getting split between the ADMK and their formation, easily I think the India Alliance and Tamil Nadu will win all 39. Similarly in Telangana, if depends on okay. how marginalized the BRS is, he will have some takers or not. Okay, all right. Sumit Peer, would you like to respond to that? that uh, <clears throat> You know, the crux of what the voter in South India, or perhaps specifically, more specifically, where the Prime Minister is right now in Tamil Nadu, is eluded the BJP so far. You see, Vineet, first of all, there is nothing called a uh, no north-south divide or a north-east divide or a north-west divide. India is one from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and Tempur to 
run of kutch so the people who are trying to create this imaginary divide will not run in their agenda because it's a part of the toolkit they want to create this north south divide yeah there might be some party strong in north some party strong in south that is politics that will keep on happening but there is not divide in india that's point number 1 there is nothing called aryan and dravidian if you look at the dna analysis of the whole india the dna sabka ek hai bhai everybody's dna is in the dna those those analysis has been there is no difference in the dna but unfortunately because of this aryan dravidian divide a lot of people's political fortunes have been thriving on that now the question i want to ask you is if you look at the rallies of the honorable prime minister in tamil nadu who believes india is one who doesn't agree to this divide you see the how many people throng the streets now if i talk of a leader like annamalai what is annamalai is he aryan is he dravidian is he tamilian he's a tamilian he's as tamilian as anybody on the show here right right my friend here so how at how a proud tamilian and ex ips officer like annamalai is not alternate to the kind of politics what mr stalin or for somebody from aidmk produces why is annamalai an inferior being for that for the sake of a better word because this kind of a divide this kind of a thought process remains in their mind so these regional parties and these regional strongholds they want to keep these regional things alive look at up where this bua batija allies bua and batija will to come together they will sweep the up uh, up ke ladke will come together they will sweep the up but you see vinith when the results came out nothing like that happened today if i look at ujwala if i look at prashwala if i look at shochala if i look at airport if i look at any of the schemes if i look at ayushman bharat if i look at mudra loans if i look at kisan samane the is there a differentiation between a bjp and non bjp ruled state no is there any differentiation in any of the central government policies no is the quantum of development less here and development there no so in fact if you see the way the up has come up from the number 2 gst contributor after maharashtra is up but that is okay it's a up is a bigger state the thing here is that people would want this divide to be there people will want this ethnic regional divide to be there but the honorable prime minister doesn't believe in this divide so it is the people of the state <laughs> to resonate to this now i'll tell you something i bet you one thing vinith i can bet you one thing this time you will see double digit seats for bjp in the sale of tamil nadu take my word i will be again i come to your shows daily take know. my word zero chance <laughs> You can take my word. Zero percent. As a Congress spokesperson, you are completely. Let him finish. Let him finish. As a Tamilian, I'm telling you. You will say you are going to win all. Right, Mr. 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 Maglam, let him make his yes. point. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. That's sure. okay. But we need when it comes to the flagship projects which are delivered on the ground, when the people see the quantum of development happening on the ground, when they see there is no corruption charges, what do you have against Mr. Anamalaya? He has done the DMK diaries. He has done like two years on AI DMK. He exposes Congress leadership. What is that you are against Mr. Anamalaya? If he is not the alternate leader, who is the alternate leader? If he under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi cannot deliver, who can deliver? The Yogi Ji came to UP. You said he is a monk. Boy, he is a sadhu. What will he do? Now he is one of the most. able chief ministers of the country so modi ji along with yogi, yogi ji changed the up right so why do you think annamalai in the leadership of prime minister modi cannot change tamil nadu what is in it head is, is he not tamil what 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 are the flaws in mr annamalai why he can't be the leader why he can't be the chief minister of the okay. tamil nadu let's These take a response people. all right let's let's also get advocate rajekaran can i can i quickly i'll come to you i'll come to you quickly, i'll come to you we have, to to really quickly. Quickly, quickly, we have a house full today we have a house full quickly quickly mr mangalam quickly 10 seconds yeah i want to say that tamil nadu has always been welcoming of outside if you go back to mgr mgr actually was from originally from the state of kerala malayali uh, jailita was half kannadiga and uh, karnanidhi if you look was actually telugu so there is this no north south divide per se we are not creating it i am just telling you how people vote in tamil then they are not outsiders and i'm telling right? you also, mr mangalam then they are not outsiders say, No, no, no. They're not outsiders, and I'm telling you right now that Mr. Anamale, for whatever good, bad, ugly, it's not his election. This is a presidential election, which is a referendum on Mr. Modi, and it is Mr. Modi's unpopularity that will be the downfall of BJP in Tamil Nadu. It's not a referendum on that poor young man, so let's leave him out of it. Okay. All right. So before I go to advocate Raj Chakran, Mr. Dr. Datta wants to make a quick 10-second rebuttal. Go ahead. Well, uh, I just sir. heard my Congress friend saying that this is a presidential form of election. So, in a way, he has acknowledged the dynamic leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister by commenting that this is a presidential form of election. That's one thing. The second thing is like you are talking about BJP not even getting one seat in Tamil Nadu. I think Congress Pan India will land up not even with a bronze medal, but with a tin medal of 25 seats, not more than that. The way the Congress is going in such a dismal way, every day exodus, 
it seems as though chickens are running here and there, directionless, like headless chicken. I mean, it's high time okay, that okay. the poster boy of uh, Congress party and the poster okay. girl Let's, of Congress yeah, okay. party. Okay, all right. We, 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 we need more people this. to comment on this as well. Advocate Raj Shekran, are you there with us? Without any facts. Advocate Raj Shekran, okay. Advocate Raj Shekran, are you there with us? Advocate Raj Shekran, are you there with us? Perhaps not. Vinita, Vinita Hari Arun. Uh, the popularity of the Prime Minister, according to uh, Mr. Mangalam, is in question over here, and that's directly been responsible for the kind of uh, output that uh, your party has been able to produce in terms of vote share and votes uh, in North and uh, Western India. But East and South is a different ballgame altogether. How do you respond to that? No, see, the popularity of Mr. Modi is undisputed and there are global ratings, there are national ratings and there are ratings across the country. So you've seen also in the roadshow the perceptions taken from the people who are waiting for Mr. Modi about his, uh, you know, aura and his... Uh, kind of stature uh, that how you kind of put India in the global map is what the people in the rally were saying. So it's not you and me who are saying this, it's the, it's the Aam Aadmi in Tamil Nadu, in Chennai who are saying this. And about, uh, you know, the remarks against the infrastructure project, so what about the responsibility of the state government? So when it comes to, you know, a, announcing infrastructure projects, you want the central government to announce, but then you don't want to implement those projects. You want the central government to give you funds, but you don't want to use them. You want the central government to give you funds, but you know how to miss manage them and to misutilize them. That's the story of all, most of the southern states, unfortunately, although we are, uh, you know, largely educated uh, population, uh, a largely evolved population, mature population, as you want to call it, but the mature population actually, you know, sends their population out of the country to the USA and to the UK, to various software firms, but do not create an industrial base, or do not create an ecosystem for them to thrive in their own state. So that, unfortunately, is the kind of... Um, you know, ethos with which the, the, our southern government, uh, the southern states uh, are uh, living what? in. So, you know, the concept of Atmanirbhar, but Mr. Kumar and Pangalam, I kept quiet when you spoke, let me speak. Pinita, so, uh, Dindraji, so I'd love to hear you out, but you're... Let, you know, let her finish, let her finish, Mr. Mr. Mangalam. Mr. Mangalam, nobody stopped you. Mr. Mr. Mangalam, if I remember, I uh, Mr. Mangalam, if I remember when you were speaking, nobody interrupted. I'll keep quiet. Thank you. So, Go uh, ahead. So, 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 you know... Vinita ji, okay, you're frozen. All right, I'll go to Raj Lakshmi Joshi. Raj Lakshmi Joshi. Isn't the DMK run uh, Stalin uh, led the DMK government responsible for this uh, infrastructure woe and the devastation that happened in the floods recently? What about all that? What about mismanagement there? So people are saying this. People see how uh, you know Modi led government uh, is actually administering various other North Indian states and even East and even you know West also. So you can look at the infrastructure growth and look at the kind of investment coming in in Northern and Western India. So definitely you know people from South should not really uh, you know miss out on all of this and uh, unfortunately all the Bimaru states I'm sorry I think you know in future the southern states would be cut off from all of this and we would become Bimaru and not the North Indian states anymore that's the story that India is going to see coming forward if this is the way uh, you know uh, the Congress and the DMK are going to be pitching the story and about the manifesto okay. The Congress manifesto lacks of any kind of creativity and innovation is borrowed its leave from our pillars of, uh, of Krishi, youth, women, the pillars at which Congress is, uh, you know, of, of pillars which Modi ji talks about, the guarantees which Modi ji is talking about, the Congress has borrowed it from us. So it's not the other way around. So that's what I would like to say. And definitely Modi's aura is going to be there. And not only Modi's aura, it's about the NDA government, the robustness, the stability which we've given to the uh, country will definitely, you know, Chennai and Tamil Nadu will definitely want that. Okay, to all right. Raja Lakshmi Joshi, Raja Lakshmi well. Joshi. The, the, the Prime Minister's push for Sabka Saath, Sabka uh, Vikas and Vishwas, and of course the Vixit Bharat initiative as well. Do you think it's resonating or beginning to break the ice in Tamil Nadu and the southern states? According to Mr. Manglam, it has not. 2019 has been a stark reminder for the Bharti Janta Party that the inroads are bumpy, but the Bharti Janta Party has left no stone unturned when it comes to initiative, when it comes to sheer will to basically tell the people of South India that, you know, we are here to involve you and in fact include you in whatever is happening in the country. Uh, good evening, Vineet. And uh, yes, uh, you know, definitely there are, there is the, a huge effort from the side of the PM, uh, not just in this term, 
but from the previous term also and i would say that it is not just uh, even uh, you know during the election time it has been a consistent effort and uh, you know this consistency you can see in all other uh, areas also like especially i would say especially in the northeast and uh, you know uh, almost every state he has been consistently going but there are a few states where he has been especially paying a lot of attention to and i would say that that is for a good reason also because uh, you know in uh, tamil nadu uh, you know there is this thing about where they uh, they have been talking about it as some other kind of a place and uh, you know mr rahul gandhi always talks about this uh, union of states uh, and you know they keep talking about it as something uh, uh, where uh, you know it uh, india he he has even asked who is this bharat mata so you know these kind of statements these kind of uh, intentions these kind of uh, uh, attitudes i think that uh, you know that has to be nipped in the bud and that is the reason why there is this huge initiative of the kashi tamil sangamam which you know uh, as much as much as you know the uh, congress spokesperson may want to laugh he may say that you are blabbering etc he is the one who has been blabbering away without any base to it and he, and uh, he is the one who is laughing the most i am glad that he is having a laughing time and uh, you know whatever we are saying so it's good because uh, i am i am glad that at least you know it is giving him some kind of relief so this kashi tamil sangam you know it is not something of a communal issue or a religious issue this is something where the culture has been uh, you know it has been shown that we are all one so you know the prime minister he is talking about how uh, all over the country you know we have this thing about where we remember the seven rivers we talk about uh, you know all the mantras shlokas everything is the same whether it may be in north india or in south india how much ever you know some political parties may want to differentiate may want to say that aryan dravidian and all that nonsense that separatism actually takes a huge dip when you talk about all these cultures and people realize that you know they they have been misled all these years so all this thing this initiative is a huge necessity and i'm glad that that has been happening and people have been realizing see they have been going to the north for uh, for employment they have been uh, working these political parties they have been very happily working with all these people from the so called hindi belt and they have been making use of all the political power they have been actually making huge pot loads of money and 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 after all of that they talk about how mr modi has not done anything for the tamil pride so they forget that Uh, they were themselves in power all these years and they did nothing for the tamil pride so there is you know there is a pride in every state it's not just tamil pride everyone has a pride so you know it is about bharatiya pride it's not just tamil pride so you know pm modi is talking about how tamil culture is also beautiful and he is talking about the beauty in the tamil language and at the same time he talks about how we okay. are one all of us are one Okay. So All right. Okay. That, we, we, we've run out of time. Dr. Datta wants to make a quick point, and so does Sumit. And uh, uh, Mr. Manglam also wants to weigh in on what has been said. Dr. Well, Datta, quickly. Well, I just have two passing questions for the Congress spokesperson. If you had done so much for the Tamil pride and for Tamil Nadu, why did you hide the single for 60 long years? You know, 60 long years in one of your cupboard. that is something which needs to be answered why did you give up a important strategic island of indian territory of tamil nadu to sri lanka in dark hours of secrecy at the dead end of night without the parliament being informed about it at all and bypassing the preamble of the constitution which does not allow the cessation of the territory of okay. india to any other country all right we 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 also have mr kevin matthew sunny uh, who's been waiting to speak kevin apologies yes i didn't come to you earlier on uh, weigh in on the pointers that have been made and do you still think that writing of the bharatiya janata party like it has been done in the past in several states where they have gone on to surprise uh the mandate is going to be a big mistake by either of the party the dmk or the ai dmk in tamil nadu see i was actually listening and it was quite uh, interesting to listen to people speak on this topic earlier because uh, the kind of uh, fallacies they were, uh, people are pushing and uh, some uh, somebody on ground somebody on from uh, from the south and somebody has been observing the political landscape uh, over here for the past 
uh, decade or so, one thing that the writing on the wall is much different from what uh, a few of the people on the pa panel, the respective people on the panel, have been trying to put out. Because one thing to start with, uh, the, po the popularity of our, our prime minister. See, he's our prime minister, but having said that, the see one thing, one difference when you we talk. There's a lot of talk uh, of, about the south and uh, east being different from the other states, but one characteristic difference that these. Uh, peculiar states have from uh, the other states is historically these states have been driven by political ideology. The different, even the differences between uh, the people here are, were driven by political ideologies, uh, which is quite different from uh, certain states where uh, religious identities were the driving factor, and that is why. And it is those states that let it be Kerala, let it be Tamil Nadu, let it be. So these these are the states where BJP has been unable to make in uh, inroads. So that you have you can see that across the country. So. It, but it is Mostly not for the lack of trying. It is not for the lack of trying, right? They have tried. It's, it's not for the lack of trying. It is because the ideology, the BJP has always come in with a religion, communally divisive ideology. And people who have been taught of ideologies, much better political ideologies, people who have been debating between the left, left, left spectrum and the right spectrum, these people... Uh, so once you're exposed to that, they tend to identify and they tend to be much less gullible as compared to people in Uttar Pradesh or Bihar, where religious identities has been used to gully people into fighting between each other. So that is one point where uh, the other parties uh, score a lot of brownie points. And uh, even with uh, when Modi came in in 2012, uh, it was kind of... Uh, there was much more, his 2012 campaigns were much more focused on bringing in the India together, bringing in development. But what happened on the ground, again, so when people are uh, educated and uh, sensible enough to understand that, because he okay. came All in right. with a... Uh, All right, we, we've run out of time, we've run out of time. Yeah. Sumit wants to make let a quick... Just, no, no, we've run out of time. Sumit, quickly, five seconds. We've run out of time. In fact, we, have, we, have, we, have, we are done with our quota. I want to ask one question to my learned friend from Congress. He said it is allegedly a presidential form of election. Sir, who is your I didn't presidential say alleged. nominee? Who is, who is your presidential nominee? I said alleged. I mean, my fingers crossed. Is it Rahul Gandhi? Is it Kargeji? Is it Stalinji? Who is your presidential nominee? That's a point number one. This point is a good question. Shall I answer? Kashmir, Kashmir to Kashi to whole of Tamil Nadu is the epitome of Shivism. If there's a Kashi Sangam, Kashi Tamil Sangam. Okay, at this point, you are different in Kashmir. Does it change in Uttar Pradesh? And does it change in uh, Tamil Nadu? He doesn't. Because we all worship him. He's the same from Kashmir to Kamnyakumari. And we have Lingas all over the place. So why you have a problem with the Kashi Tamil Sangam when we are talking about Lord Shiva and such? When we are talking about Okay, Shivism. all right. We've run out of time. We've completely I, run out of time. We, we've overdone with our allocated space and time. But uh, let me take this opportunity. Uh, to tell our panelists that we'll have ample opportunities to get back into these discussions in the very near future. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.